The race for space tourism is really heating up right now, and the competition looks to be primarily between Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic. Within this past month alone, both companies have carried out major tests validating reliability and performance of their vehicles. On July 18, Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos' space venture, conducted the ninth test, or night mission as they like to call it, of their new Shepard vehicle. The night mission specifically tested the performance of the escape motor and the ability of the crew to escape via capsule during any phase of flight. Breaking that test down a little bit, or all that means is that shortly after booster separation, in order to get away quickly from the booster in the event of a failure, the capsule fires the escape motor and the astronauts are quickly propelled a safe distance away. The escape motor delivers a whopping 70,000 pounds of thrust in a 2 second burn. That's kinda intense. During this test, both the booster and the capsule were subjected to extremely large stresses and maintained their integrity. This is an absolutely vital success for Blue Origin. Blue Origin has already had successful escape tests in 2012 when the company simulated a booster failure on the launch pad and 2016 when booster failure was simulated at max Q. That's the point in flight where aerodynamic forces are the greatest on the launch vehicle. This 2018 escape test confirmed the ability for safe escape at the near vacuum of space. Safety is the most important factor when launching people into space. And the result of this test proves that company is one step further towards space tourism. Step by step ferociously, as Jeff Bezos likes to say. Now turning it over to Virgin Galactic. On July 26, Virgin Galactic broke a number of personal records for its VSS Unity. During the third of the company's supersonic tests, or rocket power tests, all of which have happened over the past four months, through a 42 second rocket motor burn, the VSS Unity was able to reach a speed of Mach 2.4 and a max altitude or apogee of 170,800 feet. This is the first time the company has been able to reach the realm of the atmosphere known as the mesosphere. Through the test, Virgin was able to gather additional data about the vehicle's supersonic performance and the effect of the environment on the interiors of the cabin. With each supersonic test, the rocket motor has been burned progressively longer, leading to incremental gains in altitude and speed. Like the approach at Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic plans to take a step-by-step -step process to space. The company plans to continue the step-by-step -step approach until it reaches its goal at 264,000 feet, near the Von Kármán line. Both Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin have achieved remarkable goals in advancing us towards commercial space tourism. There are, however, some very noticeable differences in their approaches and style, the most noticeable probably being the look of their vehicles. Virgin Galactic's combination of VSS Unity and VMS Eve looks like an airplane. It's more precisely a specialized airplane acting as a mothership and an attached spacecraft or space plane. Two pilots are needed to operate each vehicle. In a world where systems are becoming increasingly automated, Virgin Galactic's approach seems a little traditional. It's worth mentioning though that at the time it won the Ansari X Prize in 2004, the design was quite revolutionary. A lot has changed though in the past 14 years. Blue Origin's vehicle on the other hand looks like a modern and updated launch vehicle or rocket. Unlike Virgin Galactic, all the systems are fully automated. This is a significant potential advantage when compared to Virgin Galactic. Virgin vehicles have a lot of moving parts and the lower levels of autonomy could potentially introduce the factor of human error or user error. In an industry where safety is such a critical issue, there's very little room for error, and any mishap can lead to significant losses. Blue Origin's new Shepard is fully automated, so it doesn't introduce this type of a problem. One can argue that the level of autonomy on New Shepard actually mitigates a lot of risk, making it an overall safer vehicle. But then again, you can argue the opposite. So how else do the companies differ from each other? Well, the part we've been waiting for, cabin and customer experience. We've seen some mock-ups of Virgin Galactic's interior before. Concepts were unveiled a few years ago after the Ansari X Prize in 2006. In recent years though, the company really hasn't unveiled anything different. From earlier concepts, the cabin appears to be quite spacious, the seats are reclinable, and there are a number of windows around the fuselage allowing passengers or future astronauts the ability for incredible views of the curvature of the Earth and suborbital space. The vehicle is designed to seat six passengers. Like Virgin Galactic, Blue Origins capsule is also designed to accommodate six astronauts. 
The capsule has a very futuristic design featuring the largest windows ever on a spacecraft, so the views are expected to be spectacular. The seats are reclinable and designed to absorb landing impacts, so it's expected to be an exhilarating yet comfortable ride. Both Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic will of course allow future astronauts to experience incredible g-forces through flight and leave their seats and experience weightlessness once in space or near the common line. But when? When does this all happen? Well, according to previous statements of Jeff Bezos and Richard Branson, sometime soon, maybe very soon. In a May interview with Tech Insider, Bezos is quoted as saying, we won't be selling tickets just yet, but we may put humans in it at the end of this year or the beginning of next year. That means a test with Blue Origin personnel. In an interview in late May with CNBC, Richard Branson said a few more tests would be conducted to validate the vehicle's design. After this is done, the vehicle will be moved to Spaceport America, where it will have its inaugural flight with a passenger. That passenger is expected to be Branson himself. Virgin Galactic expects to open up flights to the public in 2019. Virgin has already sold 800 seats at around $250,000 a ticket, so there's definitely a demand for this type of space tourism. Blue Origin hasn't announced its ticket price just yet. The race is extremely close, and both companies have invested billions into these space ventures. Space is hard. It will definitely be exciting to see who sends people up first. More compelling, though, will be who can last in the space tourism market and other space markets over time. Blue Origin or Virgin Galactic? Or maybe even both?